since time immemorial, people have been trying to figure out how fast is a bullet going. And you go all the way back to Hatcher's notebook and, and all of the ballistics tables that were developed trying to calculate that, the form factors that were applied to bullets, how you develop a ballistic coefficient and everything else. What, what the radar allowed you to do was to measure the actual performance of the bullet and not the theoretical performance. The best analogy I can give you of radar versus, say, legacy chronograph system is in order to use a chronograph, you have a muzzle velocity, then you have somewhere downrange, you would have another set of screens to measure the bullet at that location. Let's pick on 300 yards. With a Doppler radar, you know everything in between those two screens. So old school chronograph, you get picture at the muzzle, picture at the target, if you will. Doppler radar, you get to paint the whole picture between muzzle and target. You're measuring the actual performance of the bullet as it's going through the air, and you can then extrapolate that to all velocities and all ranges. It doesn't change what that shape is and how air flows over that. You, you now can be far more precise. The Doppler radar for Hornady was, uh, that's a fun story, I'll be honest with you. Um, it was about uh, 2014 around there. Dave and I were obviously working together a lot then, and Dave's history, he has some history with using radars to track projectiles. Well, I came from engineering school where we were using, we got to use a supersonic wind tunnel to look at shockwaves on projectiles. So I'd talk to Dave about that. He'd tell me about radar, and I'm like, Dave, we need one. We got to get one. And then obviously once we had it, oh man, the, the lid was off, man. We were doing testing. We were learning. It was one of the neatest um, instruments that I had got to use yet when shooting projectiles. You can learn so much from a radar. It's incredible. Polymer tips, though everybody loved to use, were causing some problems. And so they started experimenting with space-age polymers uh, that had uh, uh, greater resistance to friction, greater resistance to heat, and, and that created the heat shield. And it was really that that led to uh, the ELDX. When you, when you look at drag curves and a, and a bunch of them, they should, they should have a certain shape to them. Well, we were shooting tipped projectiles on a hot summer day at, you know, 3,000 feet per second, and the shapes did not look like they should. And I'm talking grossly. Like, you can look at a computer screen on the bullet went going down range and be like, man, that, something's not right. So that, that's what started it, and then it's like, okay, how does this happen? Well, it can only be influenced by a few things. The gun, the, the load, everything didn't have anything to do with it. It had to be the projectile changing in shape, going down range. And then obviously we did a, you know, a design of experiments, if you will, with a bunch of different projectile shapes and, and narrowed it down pretty darn quick to the, um, the tip of the projectile, the nose, the meat plat. Because of the, the profound impact of heat shield on long range trajectories, has led us to put that plastic in any projectile that's intended to be shot at over 400 yards at higher velocities. So your long range match grade projectiles are a given, ELDX is another one, that are a given that, that need this material in order to give exacting trajectories. Another uh, project, if you will, that came out of the Doppler radar was the Hornady Fordoff program, the ballistic program. And historically, um, trajectories were derived from a BC number of a projectile, which is simply a comparison. It's, it's not your bullet, it's a comparison to a standard. And then in an engine that uses BC. So think of it this way. BC is like a, a, a mass with a number assigned to it flying down range, and that's what you get. But now with Doppler radar, where I said where you could fill in everything between muzzle and target, now you can use your actual projectile. So the drag of your bullet you're shooting in your ballistic program. So your trajectories absolutely are perfect. I mean, if you have your muzzle velocity right and your scope height and all those inputs right, your trajectory is going to be right. It has to be, it's just, it's physics at that point. Doppler was not universally accepted, but a number of people who were very critical of it at the beginning have now adopted it pretty universally because it's true. It's just the truth.